Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to talk about our research with the State of DevOps report. In specific, we're going to talk about our research into reliability. I want to start by asking a question, what even is DevOps? There's no canonical answer that's by design. Instead, there are all sorts of different answers, and every one of them has some validity. But one of the ways that Dora has contributed to this conversation is to offer a way of measure, a sort of definition implied through metrics. And the best known of these metrics, of course, are the four key metrics of software delivery. Lead time for changes, deployment frequency, time to restore service, change failure rate. And we've grouped these historically into our throughput and our stability metrics. Obviously, uh, a lot of people have taken up these metrics, gotten a lot of value out, out of them, and we're very proud that we've been able to contribute this to the community. They're part of the core of Dora's findings, which includes evidence that software delivery matters, and importantly, that it can be measured, and that there are key capabilities that contribute to software delivery performance. But while it's clear that software delivery in shipping software quickly and often is an essential element of DevOps. It's also not all there is to DevOps. From the beginning, the DevOps mindset really encouraged us to think in terms of entire systems, right? To look at things from a value delivery point of view and prioritize flow all the way from ideas to customers. Breaking down that barrier between developers and sysadmins is, is perhaps the most important goal, but that barrier doesn't exist in a vacuum. There are all sorts of other domains, people, other processes that interrelate to build up or, we hope, break down that wall. And all of those other domains, all of those other people and teams, they may have an impact on organizational performance, and they may interact with software delivery. So what kind of things are these? Well, they're things like product, security, leadership, culture, and reliability, which is what I'm here to talk about. Dora has, has researched and, and, and probed every one of these. So I want to start by here by taking a little step back through history. Because recognizing that DevOps can defies these kinds of constraints and narrow definitions, we have a tradition in Dora of exploring beyond the core software delivery metrics that we started with. Here's a, a simplified timeline. In 2014, we started our publishing our report um, and where we focused on software delivery and also from the very beginning, we looked at organizational culture and, and the Western typology. The next year, in 2015, we moved more into the deeper into the analysis of people um, and looked at management practices and, and burnout. Then a year later, 2016, we did our first investigation into security and started looking at product management, things like lean product. 2017, we went up and out and looked at leadership and looked at the role of automation. And in 2018 was the first time that we started looking at reliability. At the time, it was called availability. We also looked at cloud. Availability was defined as an ability for technology teams and organizations to make and keep promises and assertions about the software product or service they are operating. So that word availability that's changed since then, but that definition really has not. But with the addition of that availability measure, we now have four key metrics of software delivery and an additional metric of operations. And all of these we've seen are important to recognize within our DevOps practice. And so the model has evolved. And we now have a construct we call software delivery and operations performance which combines the software delivery and the operations that we measure. And we find that this construct is predictive of organizational performance. Moving along, in 2019, we added investigations into change management and organizational transformation. What, what makes uh, teams or organizations successful at achieving a sustainable DevOps transformation? 2020 was a bit of a weird year. There was a, a, a bit of a pandemic going on. So we didn't publish a report that year, but there is a, a great publication from that year called the ROI of DevOps, provides a model for computing your return on investment for a DevOps transformation. Uh, and that model is, is just as valid today. I strongly encourage you to check that out and, 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 and use it to advocate upwards in your organization. All right, 2021, back to reporting. 
um, and back to anal analysis. And so in 2021, we deepened our research further into operational performance. To do so, we looked at established operational engineering cultures, in, in particular SRE, for inspiration. We found that there was a language conflict, an, an overloaded term. What Dora called availability was defined almost identically to what SREs were calling reliability. And to make this worse, SREs also used the word availability, but they were using it to refer to something different. In an SRE context, reliability is the umbrella term. It's a multifaceted measure of how well a system satisfies its user expectations. Availability is a dimension within that that contributes to reliability, along with latency and correctness and other aspects. So because reliability is the umbrella term, we opted to align Dora's language to the SRE language. So the thing we're talking about is the same thing. And now these two communities are able to use the same label for it. Which brings us to our most recent edition of the report, 2022, published in September. This year, we revisited some of the themes that we've explored before, and we got deeper into looking at security and reliability. So I want to take you through some of how we looked at reliability and what we found. These are the questions that we asked in this year's survey. Some of them reflect practices or inputs. What things does a team do that might contribute to reliability? Removed for as much as possible from the jargon of a specific practice like SRE, so that as many people as possible could find themselves in that language if it does apply to them. Some of these things reflect outcomes or outputs. How well does the team perform in terms of their reliability? This set of questions has evolved through the years. Many go back to 2018 and others have been added in subsequent years. Um, but at the core, we're looking to find out what kind of reliability engineering practices, if any, does your team do? And how's it going? Which we can then put into our model. The first thing we found from our research is that a majority of respondents reported the use of SRE practices or, or SRE-like practices. This was a surprise to me. There a long time there'd been sort of a, a legend that SRE was something that was only done by a Google or Facebook with production engineering. But you know, in a, in a happy uh, education for me, I learned that lots of organizations out there are doing practices that are like reliability engineering um, and getting benefit from it. But it varies a lot between companies and even within companies, even at Google where SRE is of course very widely practiced. Different teams use it in different ways. Now, from this data, we developed our structural equation model. Uh, sometimes we refer to this as the BFD, the Big Friendly Diagram. And this shows how reliability interacts with the other inputs and outcomes that we study. The area where reliability comes into play is mostly here. So we see inputs in the form of SRE practices and outcomes in the form of operational performance. You can see that it's a highly connected graph. Well, what does that mean? Here's some of our interpretations. First off, SRE is good for systems and humans, and also for business. Based on our predictive analysis, we see that SRE is good for humans. It mitigates burnout, and it enables a balance between coding or project work and more toilsome traditional ops work. It's good for systems. SRE predicts higher reliability, as we would hope, and that shared responsibility model predicts better reliability outcomes. So having a seat at the table, reliability really being treated as important, is good for the reliability of systems. And it's good for business. Higher reliability is predictive of better business or organizational outcomes. Now, we also found that there's an importance of culture. Teams that have the generative or performance-oriented typology um, if folks aren't familiar with that, you can definitely read about that in the State of DevOps reports. That generative culture is predictive of more reliable software. So teams that are uh, trustful and reliable to each other produce software that their, uh, their users can trust. Now, uh, since 2014, actually I'm not sure if it goes back to 2014, but for several years we've been doing a cluster analysis on uh, the software delivery metrics. and um, in previous years, sometimes we found three clusters, sometimes we found four. This year, again, we found three, low, medium, and high. In order to probe a little deeper, this time we did another analysis where we brought the reliability aspects into this. So using operational performance along with the software delivery metrics, four clusters emerged. And we, we saw these as archetypes. And, and so different teams have different kind of 
combinations of throughput, reliability, and we've labeled them uh, starting, flowing, slowing, and retiring. And uh, you might find yourself in one of these clusters as well. As you can see, they're pretty widely distributed across all the different teams that we've studied. So these are uh, lots of the kinds of teams that you may encounter in your work. And what you can see is reliability is an important kind of differentiator between different styles of, of team. Now, in previous years, we learned that delivery performance drives organizational performance. But this year, additionally, we learned that delivery performance derives, drives organizational performance, but only when operational performance is also high. There's a context-specific uh, dynamic at work here. To put it another way, without reliability, software delivery performance doesn't predict organizational success. And knowing that, teams have to, have to mature reliability practices to meet those reliability targets, which then impact organizational performance. Technical capabilities, they build on one another. So, you know, your continuous integration helps achieve reliability engineering, which helps achieve greater throughput. There's really a lot of, uh, of interplay here. The last finding that I want to share is about how we get from here to there. How do we achieve a mature reliability engineering practice? We found that it takes time and there may be some pain along the way. Teams that have a higher level of adoption of SRE practices have greater reliability outcomes. But along the way, you may take some steps backwards. So you can see we, this J-shaped curve uh, is something that uh, we've, we've uh, addressed before in the DevOps research, and we found it emerge from the data this year when looking at reliability. When you first start down a reliability engineering journey, things might get worse before they get better. But then once you get through that trough of despair, we see a monotonic increase in reliability outcomes as we continue to deepen our SRE practices. So with that in mind, I encourage organizations to allow some room for failure, uh, start small to constrain the, the downsides that may happen, and stick with it knowing that these practices will most likely result in greater outcomes for your engineers and your end users. I hope you all have a copy of the report and you've read it. If not, no worries, you can download it at bit.ly slash Dora Soder. And in addition to our group right here, and I'm looking forward to the discussion, I want to um, mention another group that we have. This is a monthly discussion group focused more narrowly on the reliability engineering topics, though anything DevOps is fair game. Uh, it's a lean coffee discussion that happens once a month. Uh, get on ronnie.dev, that's a uh, nominorum uh, for reliability, R9Y, but pronounce it Ronnie. Ronnie.dev slash discuss, join the mailing list, and we'd love to have you in that conversation. Uh, it happens, uh, I believe it's the third Tuesday of every month. So with that, let's kick off the discussion right here.